We're better ready to pick back up on where the question is taking us. So it says, we did part B just now. It says part C, when does it return to the origin? What is its velocity then? And in which direction is it accelerating? So this is kind of like a triple barreled question, right? The first thing they're asking is, um, when does it return to the origin? Um, what is its velocity? at that point, and then in which direction is it accelerating? So this is in our x equation, our dx on dt equation, <laughs> our x dot if you like, and our um, d squared x on dt squared, or our x double dot equation, acceleration. All right, so one step at a time. When does it return to the origin? Well, like I've been doing, I'm just gonna clear this working off so that I can look at the graph um, clearly without any other stuff. We have, as you can already see, sort of already answered this question, right? Um, it returns to the origin down here. This is that spot where, and I know the graph is slightly off, but I think that's just a, a printing error, typographical thing. Um, you can see it, it sort of um, heads in the positive direction, then heads in the negative direction, and it comes all the way back at time nine, right? So I can say, uh, let's write down part C here, part C. Um, after nine seconds, that is when the particle has um, completed the same amount of distance in the positive direction as it has in the negative direction. So that's why you're back at the origin, which is where you started. Um, particles, of course, don't have to start at the origin. You could start your particle anywhere you like, like here or here. Um, but in this case, the particle does start there, which is why they say return to the origin. So after nine seconds, particle returns to the origin. And then the next two questions within part C are about velocity and acceleration. Now, like I mentioned before, we've already answered some of this, right? Because we identified time nine as one of our stationary points. Here it is right here. Particle's stationary at three and nine. So what is its velocity? Um, its velocity is zero. So at this time, velocity is zero. Um, and because my units are uh, meters and seconds, I will include them in my answer. Velocity is zero meters per second. And then I have to say the direction of the acceleration. Now, this is, um, this is tricky. We need to think about this for a second, right? Um, acceleration, uh, what does that come from? Uh, this is the second derivative of the displacement, right? You start with displacement, first derivative takes you to velocity, second derivative takes you to acceleration. And so what that means is, if I'm talking about the second derivative, I'm really thinking about concavity. That's what the second derivative tells us when we think about graphing techniques, right? So in which direction is accelerating is another way of saying, or I could reword that as, um, which direction is the concavity facing in. If you're concave in the positive direction, then you're accelerating in the positive direction. And if you're concave in the negative direction, you're accelerating in the negative direction. Okay, so which one is it? When you have a look at this time here that I've identified at time nine, um, clearly this section of the graph, let's highlight it in the right color, this whole section of the graph here, it's concave up, right? All of these sections here, you can imagine them like a cup that's holding water, right? So even though I don't have an equation for acceleration, um, I can see from the graph, I can interpret visually that it's concave up. So therefore, um, concave up, I should say concave in the positive direction because as you can see over here, if I come back to this graph, if I put all that same information over here, there's my point return to the origin. Here's the concavity. Um, this graph over here, more. Uh, accurately represents the left rightness of the situation. So it's concave right, as you can see, okay? So therefore I am accelerating in the rightward direction. So I'm gonna write that down um, in my answer here. At this time, velocity is zero meters per second and acceleration is to the right. Which, by the way, makes sense because if you have a look at this graph, you can see um, sort of carrying on uh, over here, right? The graph gets uh, faster and faster moving in that rightward direction, um, represented by the steepness of the graph over here in the original. So therefore, you can say um, more and more acceleration just faster and faster and faster um, over there in that rightward direction. Okay, so that was part C. Um, we're almost the halfway mark. So this next question says, when is its acceleration zero? <laughs> Where is it then? And in what direction is it moving? So another triple barreled question here. So you can see here, um, I'm being asked when, another time, um, 
where is it? So that's a, a displacement question. And then in what direction is it moving? That's a, that's a velocity question, okay? So uh, when is its acceleration zero? Well, I'm gonna kind of pick up where we were thinking about on our previous question. In acceleration can be found by thinking about concavity, okay? So if concavity is the easiest way to look for, and even the next question, part E, kind of um, anticipates this, right? Um, I can look for concavity by finding the part of the graph that doesn't have any concavity or has a concavity of zero, right? It's not concave up, it's not concave down or positive or negative. Um, it, it would look like a straight line, essentially. Okay, so when is its acceleration zero? When you have a look here, um, you can see um, I've already highlighted part of the graph, which is concave up, okay? Um, and you can see there is clearly a point over here where it's concave down, right? This part's concave down. I'm kind of leaning into the next question already. But the reason why I'm highlighting this is because, um, and even the graph itself gives you some helpful information to identify this, there must be a, a switchover point between, at least on this graph, because it's continuous, there must be a switchover point between the concave negative and the concave positive. And that's why you can see it's marked in as this special time here, um, right there at time six. So um, if you want, if you zoom in close enough, right, um, I can't do it on my iPad. Um, if you zoom in close enough, you can see this section of the graph, it, it is adequately imitated by a straight line. I don't know why I wrote over, I should highlight there so you can see. That looks like a straight line, right? So there's no concavity at that point, which corresponds in this motion situation um, to no acceleration, either positive or negative. So therefore, um, I can say, um, first question, when is its acceleration zero? It's after six seconds, so let's write that down. Acceleration is zero. after six seconds. And then I have to go to the other parts of the question as well, right? So uh, it then asks, uh, where is it? In what direction is it moving? Well, where is it is a question of displacement, which is on my original graph's uh, vertical axis. So you can see over there, if I, if I correspond over to the left, it's at position four, so it's four meters. Um, in what direction is important? So it's four meters to the right of the origin, so we'll write that down. Acceleration is zero after six seconds. Um, I might put a full stop there. Um, at that time, or in fact, I'm even gonna be lazier and I'm gonna just borrow the fact that I said this earlier. At this time, it is, I think we said four meters. Yeah, four meters to the right of the origin. Four meters to the right. And in what direction is it moving? Well, um, you can think it's moving in the negative direction. That's why it has a negative gradient at that point. It's decreasing, which in our scheme means uh, negative motion is to the left, right? So it is moving to the left. Four meters to the right and moving to the left. Okay, fantastic. All right.